Hello, I'm Jody Wolf. You're watching Expose May 10, 2016 at 5.06 a.m. in Birmingham. Topic, what's going on around the world? And what about all the water, the runoff in Texas? Where did it go? Got those answers. And uh, unfortunately, there's... I need more time to do just one. But the Solomon Islands, I don't know how many there are. There's a bunch of them. And they're east of Can of uh, Australia. And I wrote it down somewhere. I'm just trying to go on memory. And um, anyway, and they're, they're Papua New Guinea. They're, they're uh, west of it and then north of uh, also parts of Australia. The Solomon Islands, what's interesting is five of them just disappeared. Disappeared, went away. And this happened, um, it looks like Friday. Five islands, Solomon Islands disappeared. Now, go back, and I did a blog sometime back about the Solomon Islands in one of them verifiable that there were still some giants that lived on it. They had entrances to either end of the island that went underground. They could go in one place, emerge in another. Giants are still living in the people there. Well, these are one of the islands that disappeared and uh, heard on um, Skywatch TV, I think it was Skywatch, maybe it was something else, that said the same thing, that said, hmm, one of these islands was inhabited by other beings, and uh, but it said that none of these islands were inhabited, which is incorrect. One of them specifically is tied into some giants living there. So... Solomon Islands, five of them disappear. They drop underwater. Nobody saw it happen. It's just that got up one morning and they're gone. But that is along that ring of fire. Going in that direction, you keep that dotted line, you come down through Japan. Keep that circle going, you get the Aleutian Islands. And you come on down into Canada, keep that circle going, you go back around through California and then up Baja, California. Up by Ecuador, right on up where they've had earthquakes in Ecuador, earthquakes in Peru and Chile, and earthquakes in, in, in Papua New Guinea, not there, but islands nearby it. So that ring of fire is very active. In Mexico, this is in Mexico, not Mexico City, but nearby, earthquakes. And they watched, and I just hope somebody filmed it, two rivers disappeared. Two rivers dove underground and gone. Huh. And um, that was during an earthquake. Man said, he said, I was blown away, you know, and, and standing there, he said, and he was a distance away from it. He saw the ground crack, you know, offset pull apart, and he said, and the river dropped in it. And he said it didn't come back up. So that too, and um, again, multiple earthquakes in the past week. And of course, you heard about the huge earthquakes from two weeks ago. The cleanup is still going on. That's just, it's not going in for years. And... Um, Water, runoff from Texas. And I can give you some educated, true answers on this that I know. Um, I've got a latest map. I didn't write the name of the reservoir down, but there is a reservoir in Del Rio, Texas. And um, that reservoir is, is a pretty big one. And it's uh, along the Rio Grande. And uh, I got to get there just to, to tell you about it. And I should have already had, had myself in place, but I didn't. I didn't. That's how smart I am. Um, anyway, the water that's, that's running off 
Texas is uh is going through all these rivers, just tons of them, tons of them. Well, the first time my wife and I went through that part, we went to to Eagle Pass, Texas, drove in to to Mexico and drove Highway 2, 60 miles to Del Rio and came out. Well, kind of the time we went in to it came out, it's probably two or three miles in, two or three miles out, but then the road itself probably right at 52, 53 miles. And we drove that distance through there. And we made only a couple of stops because there was nothing. Well, when we left, we were driving, traveling Highway 90, also called uh, the Pecos Road or something like that, Stagecoach Road. or um, I wrote it down and I did not note it <laughs> as usual. But uh, anyway, yeah. Um, the reservoir there in Del Rio is the uh, Amistad, A-M-I-S-T-A-D Reservoir. And it's, it's divided, it's split and used by both Mexico and the United States. But very interesting about this. When we went through there in 95, it was full, right at full. And I got off the road after crossing the bridge from Del Rio, drove down a little place and didn't walk far to the water's edge. And I started, you know, just pulled out my rod and reel and made a couple of casts and um, boom, I got a hit. And I fought just maybe two minutes or three minutes Pop my dog on the line. Anyway, the road name, Highway 90, is also the Texas Pecos Trail. And um, pop my line. And it was big. It was big. I'm used to fishing in tournaments. I know what tournaments are. Um, I was pretty good at it. I hadn't fished in a long time. So the last time that I went through there with my daughters, with them, was in 2002 when one of my daughters went. Water was so far down, I mean, we had to walk an extra 300 feet to the water's edge compared to the first time. It's just like Lake Powell in Utah. It's just so down. But now, today, that baby is near full again. Not only that, the Pecos River, just a few miles away, you rarely see it covering the whole bottom, but it's, it's, it is today. Now, the park from Pecos River, you remember Pecos Bill? He, that's the river he tamed. Remember that? Maybe it's Paul Bunyan that did that. Heck, I don't remember. Anyway, um, there's a, a, a built knoll where it enters into the Rio Grande. And that's to, to trap water. That's to help the fish and animals that are there. Tracing the river back all the way to I-10. It's, it's got lots of water. And every runoff place has water trickling into it. And you could tell a couple of them had pretty big water flows going into it. So right now, the Pecos River is doing fine. And um, what I was going to tell you, in 95, we went through there. We came back in 96. We talked to some people, and I don't know who it was, but we found out in advance and then went down. There was a church, in, I mean, a town in Mexico that they had to flood for the reservoir. Not the Armistad, but another one farther down. And the water got so low, and this was in 95, that it exposed a church that they forgot was there. And it was a sensation. And they took that church, planned it on the National Historic Society, and and they could not build that reservoir there. They had to protect that church now. So that church is a tourist attraction. When you go into it, 
You can, you can go online and see pictures of it. Unbelievable of the marble, the architecture. The windows are still in it. And um, it's amazing. After the, the drought, it was exposed, and it is still exposed. They won't dare let water hit it. And um, anyway, all these, when you drive through lower Texas, you may see gauges on the side of the road when you hit these dips. Those gauges is the water height, is where water has been. And some of those gauges are marked six and eight feet. And uh, when you hit a place that's long enough, you know, like a quarter mile, and then you see a storm off in one direction that you know where it is, water has come through there. They're indeed true flash floods that quick. And when you get to those areas, you kind of watch before you enter them and you speed up when you get in them. My wife freaked out on me one day because I was going through one and looking at that storm. So I wonder if water will come through here. I'll never say that again to her. Of course, she passed away, but she made me get out quick. Um, anyway, that's what's happening right now. Texas, plenty of water, reservoir full, all the creeks, little tiny creeks that's been dry for years, got plenty of water in them. And um, all I can say is, what next? Jody Wolf Exposed.